Washing of the whole body, Kitab al Ghusl. Let's begin. The performance of ablution before taking a bath. Narrated Aisha Raziallahu the wife of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took a bath after Janaba, he started by washing his hands, then perform ablution like that for Salah. After that, he would put his fingers in the water and move the roots of his hair with them and then pour three handful of water over his head then pour water all over his body so this is narrated by Aisha radiallahu ummahatul mu'minin and this she is a wife of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whenever prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took bath after janaba and janaba is having a shower after sexual impurity he started by washing his hands. First and foremost, washing his hands. Then perform ablution, wudu, just like for the salah prayer. After that, he would put his fingers in water. You know, put the fingers in the water and move the roots of his hair with them. Okay? And then pour three handful of water over his head and then pour water all over the body. I hope it's uh, clear now. Another hadith. This is narrated by Maimuna Radiyallanha, the wife of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam perform ablution like that for Salah. Again, here also we learn like that for Salah, but did not wash his feet. Okay, in this hadith, he did not wash his feet. He washed off the discharge from his private part. Then pour water over his body. Okay, uh, you know, uh, clearing, uh, washing off the discharge from the pri private part. And then pour water over his body. He withdrew his feet from the place, the place where he took the bath. And uh, the washed them. And that was the way of taking bath of Janaba. And taking bath by a man along with his wife. You know, taking bath with the wife. Let's see detail of this. Aisha Radiallahu uh, Anha, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I used to take a bath from a single pot called Farah. You know, they are taking bath from the single pot and that is called Farah. Taking bath with the sa of water or one sa equal to three kilogram approximate. Narrated Aisha radiallahu that she was asked about the bath of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She brought a pot containing about a sa of water and took a bath and poured over her, over her head. At the time, there was a screen between her and the questioner. Why this is mentioned here? Like Ummahat al muminin they used to answer the question, but there will be a screen between them when they are. Uh, when questioner is asking question and she is answering it it means that the hukum of bail has been uh, like uh, it already ordered so there is a veil between them and here in another hadith narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhuma and man asked him about taking a bath he replied a sa of water is sufficient for you. A man said, a sa is not sufficient for me. Jabir said, a sa was sufficient for one who had more hair than you and was better than you, meaning Prophet Wasallam. And then Jabir put on his garment and led the salah prayer. You know, some people, they have more hair, longer hair, that also talking about sa should be enough. And I uh, clear that uh, one sa equal to 3 kilogram approximate, okay? Another hadith, pouring water thrice on one's head. Narrated Jubair bin Motim, radiallahu Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, As for me, I pour water three times on my head. And he pointed with both his hands. Okay, how many times he has to? Uh, three times. And another hadith, starting once bath by... Scenting oneself with hilab or some other scent. 
you know, uh, putting some scent on your body. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha, whenever the Prophet sallallahu took bath of Janaba, that is sexual relation or wet dream, he asked for hilab. He hilab or some other scent. He used to take it in his hand, rub it first over the right side of his head and then over the left and then rub the middle of this of his head with both hands. Another hadith, having sexual intercourse and repeating it. Many people, they have this doubt. They keep on asking it. Once they are done, can they repeat it? And what is the hukum for that? Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha that she used to put scent on Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And he used to go around his pipes. And in the morning, he assumed the ihram. And the fragrance of scent was still coming out from his body. Narrated Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to visit all his wives in a round during the day and night. They were how many wives? Eleven. Okay. And in another quotation, nine in number. In one of the narration, it is mentioned eleven. In another, it is nine in number. I asked Anas, had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa strength for it? Anas radiallahu anhu replied, we used to say that the Prophet ﷺ was given the strength of 30 men. How much strength he has? Like of 30 men. And Saeed said on the authority of Qatada that Anas had told him about 9 wives only, not 11. So what we learn from this narration, uh, like he has 9, uh, not about 11. But there are two different narrations here, okay? Whenever scented himself and then took a bath, while the effect of scent remained even after bathing, you know, the scent is so strong, even after having shower, it still, you can smell it. Narrated Aisha radiallahu it is as if I am just now looking at the glitter of the scent in the parting of the Prophet's head hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was a muhrim to rub the hair thoroughly while taking a bath. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha, whenever Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa took bath of Janaba, he cleaned his head, hands and performed ablution. What we have to again we learn in this hadith, first and foremost thing is cleaning his hands and perform ablution just like that for the salah. And then took a bath and rubbed his head till he felt that the whole skin of the head become wet. You know how you shampoo your head, the same with the whole head become wet. Then he would pour water thrice and wash the rest of the body. And these days we have shower and it made it very easily. Remember that, that time they don't have running water. They have to collect in uh, some vessel and they have to use some something to take out the water and use it. If someone while in mosque, remember that he is in Janaba, he should leave the mosque to take bath and should not perform tayammum. Narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, once the call, ikama for the salah prayer was announced and the rose was straightened. Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa came out. When he stood up at the musalla, he remembered that he was Junub. Then he ordered us to stay at our places and went to take bath. And then returned with water dropping from his head. He said, Allahu Akbar, and we all offered the salah prayer with him. So it happens, you know, as soon as you remember, you go and have the shower. So he remembered that he was in a janaba and he went and took the shower and he came back and water was dripping from his hair. And the, before starting this chapter, in the starting, like I, I mentioned, having sexual intercourse and repeating it. Like you want to repeat it again, what Rasulullah used to do, he would just uh, take the, like, you know, instead of uh, taking shower, he just do wudu. And can repeat second time. And one can wash hand. But mustahab is having budu. And you can repeat sexual intercourse again. 
whosoever took a bath alone in seclusion completely without clothes okay without uh, clothes means naked narrated abu huraira radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the people of bani israel used to take bath naked all together looking at each other prophet musa alaihi wasallam um, used to take bath alone they said by allah nothing prevents musa alaihi wasallam from taking a bath with us except that he has a scrotal hernia so once musa alaihi wasallam went out to take a bath put his clothes over a stone and then that stone ran away with his clothes musa alaihi wasallam followed that stone saying my clothes o stone my clothes o stone till the people of bani israel saw him and said by allah musa alaihi wasallam has got no defect in his body and then musa took his clothes and began to beat the stone abu huraira added by allah there are still six or seven marks present on the stone from that excessive beating so in this hadith what we learn there was uh, no aib or no um, um, nothing on his uh, body but uh, people of bani israel they were thinking that uh, because he has something on his body so he is uh, hiding it it was the haya he don't want to take bath in front of others and that's what one should have the haya and another hadith narrated by abu huraira radiyallahu anhu prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when prophet ayub alaihi wasallam was taking a bath naked golden locusts began to fall on them in his clothes his lord addressed him o ayub haven't i given you enough that so that you are not in need of them ayub alaihi wasallam replied naam yes by your honor power but i cannot dispense with your blessing because allah is giving so i am taking it to screen oneself from the people while taking a bath so narrated by umme hani bint abi talib radhiyallahu anha i went to allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the year of conquest of makkah and found him taking a bath while fatima radhiyallahu anha was screening him prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked who is it i replied i am umme hani what is said regarding the sweat of junu and a believer does not become impure narrated abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came across me in one of the street of madina and at that time i was junu so i slipped away from him and went to take a bath on my return prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said o oh, abu huraira where have you been i replied i was junu so i dislike to sit in your company Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said subhanallah a believer never become najis impure so here what we learn a believer is never najis here it doesn't mean like as soon as you are in jannah ma you have to take the shower many people have this question what is mustahab what can be done so in the following hadith inshallah you will get the answer a junub can sleep without taking a bath but with ablution narrated umar bin al qattab radhiyallahu anhu i asked allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam can any one of us sleep while he is junu he replied yes if he performs ablution he can sleep while he is junu you know most of the time it happens during the night time this uh, like you have uh, intercourse and you want to sleep yes you can because here the hadith and that it clearly mention one can sleep without having the shower can any one of us sleep while he is in junu he replied yes but if he perform ablution that would be nice so here not only this few points i want to clear first of all it is mustahab it is liked or loved if you take the shower that moment of time like you have to do your salah or you have uh, anything left from your ibada then it becomes conditional that you have to finish your ibada isn't it and you have to take the shower but what if 
You completed your ibadah and everything. That is the night time and it's mid of the night. And you want to go to sleep. Yes, you can go to sleep. But only thing you have to remember what is the sunnah. Just use the washroom, clean yourself, do the wudu. If you don't do wudu, that also fine. Because one of the narration we find it, Rasulullah sometimes just washed his hand. He didn't do the wudu also. And another thing, most of the people, they ask this question. Once they had the intercourse, they, can they repeat? Yes, they can repeat. But it is mustahab, it is liked that you do the ablution before doing second time. And another thing, many people, they sleep. And like I'm talking about after doing the Fajr prayer. Now they had intercourse. Why I'm clearing these things? Because many sisters, they have this question. So if, if we clear once, that will be enough for everyone. And everyone will be uh, like uh, getting their queries, answers. So here you had this uh, intercourse after Fajr. And now you have to drop your children. And you don't have time. You wake up and you realize after Fajr you, you went to sleep. And you, you went to sound sleep. And you, you realize you're still in Junoob. And you don't have time for the shower and you have to drop your children. So what you're going to do? You're going to drop the children and come back. Then you can have shower. There is no hard and fast rule. Mustahab is when you go out, it's better to take shower and go. But some exceptions are there. Because we see uh, when uh, one of the Sahaba, he was passing through the masjid. He was Junoo. He was a Jumbi. But he was allowed to pass through the masjid. But he was not allowed to sit and do the ibadah. No way. The same thing for our self. You can do the household chores. But it is not liked. It's not appreciated. The loved and liked thing is better to take the shower. But you don't have time. And you have to drop them. So you're going to drop them and come back. Then you can have your shower. That also fine. But um, some people, they ask question, they are nursing their children. Is it allowed to have in the Jumbi condition and still they um, nurse their children? It is okay, but again, the mustahab thing, better to take shower ASAP. But what if in the night time you had it and you went to sleep, but before Fajr you have to, isn't it? You're not going to miss the Fajr prayer. And many sisters, because of the shyness, because they are living with the extended family, they don't take shower and they don't do Fajr prayer. And they neglect. And that is a fariza. That is a mandatory thing. It's not only extended family. Sometimes you stay with your children and they are grown up. And you think they will understand. So what? It is a personal thing between husband and wife. And husband and wife, they are libas. So it's a personal thing. You can take shower in the night, but you don't want to take. You are tired. You want to take in the morning, in the tahajjud time. That also fine. In the, during the daytime, you had it once. And you are delaying it and leaving the fard prayer. That is not appreciated. Mustahab is take the shower as soon as possible. But many people ask how Prophet ﷺ used to do. He took the shower before Fajr also, before Tahajjud time. Because he was doing Tahajjud regularly. And uh, that is the thing Rasulullah ﷺ used to do. Like you can sleep in the night in the uh, Janaba and in the morning in the Tahajjud time you can take the shower. And here we have so much luxury you don't have to turn on any switch or anything. Just you can have the hot water and that to running water. That time they don't have that opportunity. What is sunnah is both the way we get. He used to take shower at that moment of time. And many times he took shower at the tahajjud time. And the same question has been asked during the Ramadan time. What is mustahab and what is what one has to do? Like you know, we, you wake up. And it is only few minutes left for the Fajr. And you want to eat something. So what you, you want to do? Because now you are in Janaba. 
can you eat or you can you take the shower you going to eat you going to eat first because there is nothing wrong with you you can go in the kitchen even you can make food there's nothing wrong in making a food many people ask can we make food we are in that condition yes you can make food go and make the food eat your food and then take shower and do your fajr salam it is mustahab like you know when you are in janaba better you wake up early in the tahajjud time do tahajjud eat properly before that you take the shower but what sometime it happens mishap happens but that also we get the authenticity like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to eat and then take shower and very rare but it can happen so one has the excuse but you can't miss fajr prayer you have to do asap so before fajr you wake up it's like only 15 20 minutes for fajr so you going to eat finish your uh, eating go and take your shower and do the fajr prayer okay i hope i clear the matter here when male and female organs come in close contact bath becomes compulsory narrated abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when a man sits in between the four parts of women and did the sexual intercourse with her bath becomes compulsory so here one has to take the bath and it is compulsory if you have any questions and queries you are most welcome to ask and let me know you can uh, like uh, live uh, students you get chance to ask question right away but what about uh, you know those who are listening on youtube and facebook they can send me question inshallah i'll clear the matter jazakallah khairan kaseera subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu